Looks like a normal garden, right? Zoom in just a little. More. A little more. Okay, pan to the right. Now you're right. Bingo! What's that you're looking at? A stick? Wait a minute. Ah, there it is! Now that's what I call camouflage. The mantis is a beast in the insect world. Its preferred menu? Other insects. And birds. And frogs. Even mice. These mini machines come in many sizes and colors and are found in almost every corner of the world. Most of them are green or brown to blend in with their surroundings. But others like to put on something flashy and are always dressed for the occasion. These powerful insects are a farmer's best friend. They chomp up all the vermin and parasites, leaving the fields nice and clean. Ah, good old mantises! And look at that! It's making its way to another branch. Its large front legs act as a grappler and hook to latch onto anything that strikes its fancy. Those legs have sharp spikes on them, and getting caught in that grip would be the last place you'd want to be. And its back legs are powerful enough to lunge itself at anything tasty. There's no chance for escape. And besides looking mean, they're fast, like blink of an eye fast. They catch their daily meal without even breaking a sweat. Pretty flashy. And they don't like to waste time. They start eating their lunch while it's still alive and kicking. Ooh. But enough about the mantis. Let's go down to ground level. Ooh, check out that snake in the grass. Cunning little thing. It's a small snake, only about a foot long, and it doesn't eat anything outside its strict diet. It feasts on little insects, birds, and mice. It slithers its way onto the tree, not knowing the mantis is there waiting, disguised as a twig. The mantis sees everything. It's able to turn its triangular head a full 180 degrees to get the perfect view. It has two compound eyes and three other simple eyes squeezed in between. Definitely not afraid of a little eye contact. The snake slides its way up the tree trunk and inches its way closer to the mantis. They lock eyes. The snake launches itself and bites into the mantis's leg. The mantis slips and falls down the tree. Just in time, it manages to reach out and hang onto a small tree branch and regain its balance. It sinks into its signature fighting stance. Woo, that was quick. No preparation, no warm-up, nothing. The snake slithers its way down, and once again, they're face to face. They stare at each other. Who's gonna make the first move? A mantis usually lifts its arms in the air and expands its back wings to make it look larger when it's getting threatened. Ah, remember the Karate Kid? Yeah, just like that. But not today. It's confident enough against this puny grass snake. The snake, meanwhile, doesn't know what to expect. It's never faced such an alien-like creature before. It's like a stick, but also looks delicious. Ah, confusing. After a second, the snake makes another lunge. It opens its jaws and tries to bite the mantis, but it misses. The mantis dodges easily and grabs hold of the snake's neck. It tries to take a bite, but the snake wiggles free in spite of the mantis's sharp spikes on its legs. The snake's free, but the damage is done. Those spikes penetrated the snake's thick skin. One point for Team Mantis, but the snake isn't quitting anytime soon. It surprises the mantis with a sneak move and catches it off guard. But the mantis manages to do a little hop, a little jump, and grapples the snake to the ground. And this particular mantis is snake-size hungry. TKO, if you know what I mean. The snake never had a chance. But it might not end so quickly if the mantis was facing a hornet. Now we're talking. A flying beast with a beefy stinger versus a quick-footed, clawed fighting machine. Okay, we got time. Let's do it. The mantis stands guard, motionless. It turns its head around, and all five eyes scan the sky, the ground, watching, waiting. So far, nothing. The ground is clear, and the sky is a spotless blue. Then, a quick shadow-like movement flashes across the sky. The mantis couldn't get a good look at it. Another swoosh and a flash of color, this time from behind. Something's toying with the mantis, trying to weaken it psychologically. But the insect holds its ground. A true mantis doesn't flinch. This time, the hornet flies right past it. Those buzzing wings make a sound like a mini helicopter. 
The mantis is prepared and double checks its equipment. It looks down at its front legs to make sure they're ready for anything. It's a game of patience. Who's going to show weakness first? The hornet swoops down and tries to sting the mantis. But the mantis is fast. Fast enough to move out of the way, but not quite fast enough to grab hold of the flying beast. It'll have to wait for the hornet to come around again. Then it'll be ready. The mantis needs to time this thing just right. If it can get the perfect angle, it can grab hold of the hornet and wrestle it down. But the hornet is too clever. It keeps coming in at different speeds and angles. The mantis is used to ambushing its opponent, so just waiting around to be stung isn't its favorite activity. But it's quick enough to ward off any attacks. Another flash, and the hornet surprises the mantis from behind. It knocks it down. The hornet almost engages its stinger, but just misses. The mantis sees its chance. It gets back up, but one of its back legs is damaged. This could be a huge advantage for the hornet, since the mantis needs both back legs to lunge and pounce. It wobbles around a bit, trying not to appear weak. Speed and counterattacks aren't an option anymore for the mantis. But at least the hornet isn't as quick as a snake. Even without its back legs, the mantis is still powerful. The hornet comes in from another direction and tries to sting the mantis. But the mantis shifts position and manages to escape. But as hard as it tries, it just can't grab hold of the hornet. The hornet flies up higher than ever and uses gravity to build up some serious speed. It misses again, but the impact of the diving hornet damages the mantis's other leg. It can't move. It looked like it's all over. There's no way for the mantis to escape. The hornet decides to go in for one final sting. But this time, the mantis actually grabs hold of the hornet. Without the use of its hind legs, the mantis can't seem to pin it down properly. The hornet manages to hover a little, straining to fly away to safety. The mantis's weight pulls it back down. The more they wrestle, the more the mantis's spiky front legs start to dominate. They grip the hornet tighter and tighter, digging their spikes in deeper and deeper. The mantis sees this as an opportunity to start biting the hornet. But the hornet also has powerful jaws and bites back. Meanwhile, a small little housefly watches in the background, frozen in fear. Shoo, fly! You shouldn't be here! It's dangerous! Buzz off! The scuffle breaks apart as the hornet is somehow able to escape the mantis's grip and crawl away. Crawl, not fly. The mantis was able to damage the hornet's wings. The mantis digs deep and finds a hidden energy reserve. It crawls up to the hornet and manages to grab it again, this time from behind. This way, the hornet won't be able to sting the mantis or even bite it. The hornet can see what's about to happen, and it's helpless. The mantis's claws are locked in way too tight. The mantis begins biting. It may have a smaller jaw than the average hornet, but it's quick and just as powerful. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of those jaws. The hornet tries everything, crawling, flying, jumping off the branch, but nothing works. It succumbs to the mantis's claws and its never-ending appetite. Another stunning victory for the amazing mantis. Now, aren't you glad middle school wasn't like this? Snakes, crocodiles, big lizards. Eh, not exactly a big deal. I mean, I guess they're less scary in pic... Whoa, I take it back. Crocodile monitors are the only reptiles, other than snakes of course, that have forked tongues. No, we're not counting telemarketers. Somehow, that tongue helps them pick up delicious scents. Oh, and they're also called tree crocodiles. So if you ever thought you'd be safe up in a tree if you got chased by a crocodile, better think again. They're full of surprises, including impressive tree climbing skills. They're quite aggressive, and luckily, they live far, far away, somewhere in the mountains of New Guinea. It may not be the giant dragon you saw in that fantasy movie last week, but the Komodo dragon is scary in its own way. The biggest living lizard even has its own island named after it. If you're ever in Indonesia, 300 pounds, 10 feet long, definitely worth a look, up from a distance. This lizard tends to dig a huge hole where it lays its eggs. 
As soon as the younger ones gain some strength, they run away from home and climb up the nearest tree. Not because they're being rebellious, more to avoid being eaten. Yep, they don't have the best parents in the world since, well, Komodo dragons sometimes eat other Komodo dragons. So, yeah. This turtle is all about breaking stereotypes. It looks like a dinosaur tried to crash the annual turtle Halloween party. A ridged shell, rough skin, and an insanely strong bite. Definitely not your average turtle. They live in swamps and freshwater lakes and are definitely the largest and meanest looking of all snapping turtles out there. They're also the heaviest. The biggest one ever found weighed almost 250 pounds. Because of the algae growing on their shells, you might think you're looking at some sort of oddly shaped rock sticking out of the water. Finally, a scary movie starring a turtle as a bad guy. They walk at night and will literally eat everything they find. I'm talking snakes, opossums, water birds, squirrels, other turtles, and this is the impressive part, even some smaller alligators. I don't know if I'm ever going to swim in a lake again. Snake time, beady little eyes, crazy colored skin. Yeah, that's not the case with a Madagascar blind snake. These small reptiles look like skinny pink worms, and you're not exactly going to stumble across them in the wild. They live underground. And yes, they have really poor vision. They can only see blurry shapes and shadows. That's why they mainly hunt by smell. Blind snakes in general can grow up to a foot long, and they live on all continents except Antarctica. And speaking of snakes, I just can't leave out the cobra. Yellow, black, striped, so many patterns and colors. But there's one, you better hope you never meet her. The queen, the red spitting cobra. This one won't bite you to inject its venom. It's got a bit more of a rude approach. It contracts the muscles around its venom gland and spits them out right into your face. It seems like a way scarier tactic than a regular old bite, but there's a catch. This cobra's venom doesn't work if it falls on your skin or even gets into your mouth. For things to get really nasty, it has to get into your eyes. Phew! I mean, it's not like animals have such an amazing aim that they can nail you in the eye while you're running away, right? Well, there was an experiment, and those spitting cobras managed to hit a researcher's goggle-covered eyes 10 out of 10 times. Speaking of snakes, no way. Speaking of turtles, okay, snake-neck turtles, I got it eventually. When you see one roaming around, you might think it's a snake that's borrowing its buddy's house while it's out of town. But no, this turtle's neck is almost half its total size. How awesome would we look with necks like that? Eh, no thanks. They mostly chill in wetlands or swamps. Some of them are also known as stinkers, like me. And you can find out why if you catch one having a bad day. They can launch their stinky spray more than 3 feet. Well, that beats me. Pac-Man frogs, named after the greatest game ever, according to that weird guy you met at the grocery store, have round, plum bodies with pretty big stomachs and mouths. They come in different colors, including apricot, strawberry, and albino. So, red, yellow, and white, I guess. They're pretty lazy and not into climbing or even moving. They do have teeth, though, and they won't hesitate to bite if you touch them. Luckily, they're not poisonous, but it probably wouldn't feel that good to have a frog hanging from your finger. No, I guess it wouldn't. This is a gharial, one of the strangest and most unique crocodiles out there. Check out that ridiculous snout. But it does come in handy when it's trying to catch fish. Unlike crocodiles that stalk and then lunge at their prey, gharials sense vibrations in the water. Then they whip their heads from side to side, then it's sushi time! Nom, nom, nom. Their jaws have more than 100 teeth. Gharials prefer to stay in the water most of the time, but sometimes they go out to chill if it's sunny enough. Just give them a clear freshwater river and they'll be happy. Yeah, no need to tell me twice. Lizards, snakes, frogs, step aside please, turtles are slowly but surely taking over this video. Strap yourselves in for the pig nose turtle. It's another freshwater turtle, this time with a long snout, complete with two big nostrils. It gets its name because… duh. That sweet snout allows it to breathe while the rest of its body stays underwater. 
That way, it can keep its body hidden. It's safe from any underwater danger, too, since its belly looks sort of like the reflections made by nearby trees. It may look funny, but this turtle's had its own camouflage tactics and totally unique look for the last 140 million years. That's way before the dinosaurs went extinct. The leaf-nosed snake has a quite elongated body and a bizarre nose that looks kind of like a bendy leaf. Okay, so this Pinocchio snake comes from Madagascar and lives in trees. And you might easily mistake it for a branch. This snake chills during the day and goes out at night to find itself some delicious smaller reptiles, frogs, and even birds. Picture yourself on a sandy tropical beach. The sea, coconuts, palms, and iguanas? Yeah, these guys hang out everywhere. In the sand, up trees, on walls. They live all the way from Mexico to Brazil and love to chill anywhere sunny. It's not just a relaxing hobby. They need the sunlight for its vitamin D, which helps them absorb more nutrients from their food. And no worries, iguanas aren't dangerous as long as they don't feel threatened. If they do, well, luckily they're not venomous. But they do have sharp teeth that can cause some serious discomfort. Oh, and you know how those smaller lizards lose their tail when they get stuck or when you step on them? The same thing happens to iguanas. A legless lizard is a reptile that's always getting mistaken for a snake. It actually lost its legs and arms, not overnight of course, but through millions of years of evolution. Snakes lost their legs and arms even earlier. Still, there are real differences between them. If you get up close and personal with a legless lizard, you'll see that it blinks. But snakes, on the other hand, they don't even have eyelids. They protect their eyes with see-through membranes. Snakes actually have shorter tails, while legless lizards, well, they're mostly tail. Now you're totally ready for next Monday's Quiz Night, Reptile Edition. Gotta say it again, turtles are rocking this video. And this time, I mean literally. Merry River turtles look just awesome. It's not like you see a reptile with a green mohawk every day. But this little turtle has a secret. That's not its natural hair. It's actually algae. Ooh, slimy. Back in 2009, people in Ishikawa, Japan, saw a kind
cherry and as large as a watermelon. During the night, you can see dozens and sometimes even thousands of fireballs. Scientists don't have any solid explanation why it happens, but it's probably flammable gas released by the marshy environment. Still, a local superstition claims it's all because of a giant serpent living in the Mekong. Tornadic waterspout is a tornado that doesn't occur on land, but on water. The speed of the tornado can be really high. The water is collected and partially pulled up. It manages to pull fish and even turtles up into the air. Actually, raining fish can also be explained by this weather phenomenon. The same might happen on the snow, too, but it's really rare. There are only six pictures of snow spouts, four of which were taken in Ontario. This weather phenomenon requires that the water is warm enough to produce fog while the air temperature is really cold, next to impossible. Lava is red, sky is blue, I'm on bright side, and so are you. Okay, I made that up. But the part about the lava being red can change. That's true, especially if you see the lava flowing from Kauai Jen Volcano located in Indonesia. It has a typical red color during the day, but at night, it turns luminescent blue. No mystery behind it, just tons of sulfuric acid. This volcano also has the largest acidic crater lake in the world. The water there is so turquoise, you want to jump in immediately. But you probably already guessed that you should never ever do that. The fire on that volcano is also blue, and it's the largest blue fire in the world rising up to 16 feet. In some places, water may look like glass. White salt ponds might look like windows or even portals to the world underneath. They have their look because of salt evaporation, and such lakes can be found in France and India. But the Cargill salt ponds in the San Francisco Bay Area look even crazier because of vibrant colors. The shades vary. It can be deep blue, grass green, orange, crimson, vermilion, and even magenta. The color difference is all about the different levels of salinity and tiny microorganisms living in those ponds. On the shore of the Baltic Sea in Kaliningrad District, Russia, there's an enigmatic national park called Dancing Forest. The pine trees are all crooked and twisted there. The forest didn't appear until the early 60s, when the pines were planted to make the dune sand in that area a bit more stable. It's probably the unstable sand that made those trees twist that way. Another reason why those trees are so crooked might be strong winds. Some people claim it has something to do with supernatural powers. They say this forest is a place where positive and negative energies meet. Locals believe if someone climbs through one of the rings in those trees, it'll add an extra year to this person's life. The throbbing hum in Taos, New Mexico has driven locals crazy since the 1990s. Low-frequency hum doesn't let you sleep normally. Even though scientists tried so hard to find the source of the hum, they failed. They blamed it on mechanical devices and even animals. The West Seattle hum, for example, was related to toadfish. Different variations of hum were also heard in the UK, Australia, and in some areas of the United States. Luckily, only about 2% of the world's population can hear it. Noctilescent clouds, or simply night clouds, are so rare because 1. They only form in summer, and 2. They can only be seen at latitudes between 50 and 70 degrees both north and south. To see those clouds, the sun should be already below the horizon, but the clouds still have to be in sunlight. It's possible for the highest clouds in the atmosphere, which are located about 50 miles up. We can't see them during the day because they're too faint. Fairy rings, also known as elf rings or pixie rings, are the enigmatic rings of mushrooms that appear in grasslands and forested areas. Scientists can't explain why these fungi can form nearly perfect circles. But the superstition claims that fairy dances would burn the ground causing mushrooms rapid growth. In fact, it's partially true. The mushrooms grow in places where grass withered. The Amazon River, one of the longest on our planet, stretches for 4,000 miles which is more than a drive from Vienna to New Delhi. But there's one river in South America that beats the Amazon River twice. First, it's wider. Second, nobody ever saw it. It's an Amazon underwater twin called the Hamza River, and it runs two and a half miles underneath. Scientists found it 10 years ago, back in 2011. Don't blink, or you'll miss this rarest weather phenomenon. Red sprites are electrical discharges in the sky that look a bit like an aurora. It's super powerful, about 10 times stronger than any regular lightning, but it lasts just a couple of seconds. 
They were first photographed in 1989, and there are still very few photos and video recordings of this lightning. To make a video that can clearly show red sprites, it should be at about 7,000 frames per second. Well, I'm out.